Fox Sports. We are Baltimore. We are LA. After some more late inning magic on Sunday. That's driven out to left center field. Upton comes through with a clutch. Justin Upton with a two RBI double, and the Angels are on top four to two. The Angels remain on the heels of the Minnesota Twins for a spot in the postseason. With only 19 games remaining, the Angels continue their push for the playoffs against one of the best teams in baseball, the Houston Astros, and their new ace, Justin Verlander. Always good to return home, especially after an off day yesterday, tonight from the Big A. The Angels kick off a long homestand. It's a nine-gamer, and it's a tough one. It starts with the Houston Astros, the division leaders. As we take a look at the wild card standings, the Angels at the start of the day, one game back of the Minnesota Twins for the second wild card spot. Minnesota easily handling the San Diego Padres so far tonight. As we welcome you inside our broadcast booth and back to Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West, along with Mark Kubiza. I'm Victor Rojas, and we're going to talk a little bit about the starting pitchers tonight because Garrett Richards is on the mound for the Angels and the newest toy for the Houston Astros, Justin Verlander, on the hill for the Astros. And, of course, Verlander's making his second start the first time around. Not too bad, but let's focus in on Garrett because he's gone a couple of times, starting to build up the pitch count. Hopefully he can work a little bit deeper. Yeah, Victor, that last time out, what, about 51 pitches? Probably get up to around 70 or so today. That last time out, I'll tell you what, you talk about consistent velocity on his fastball. You're talking... 95, 97, his break of ball was extremely sharp whether, sharp, whether it was his slider or his curveball against some left-handed batters. He's going to need to be able to have that break of ball working against a very deep, dangerous Astro lineup. And when you think about facing a very good pitcher, Justin Verlander, one of the best, 184 career victories. He's been an MVP. He's been a Cy Young. And he's got a fastball, that four-seam fastball up there. Very, very competitive. Although the Angels, with some pretty good career numbers, especially here in this ballpark. And ERA just barely under six here for Verlander at the Big A. Now he's making his second start of this season. The Angels touched him for a loss back in May when he was a member of the Detroit Tigers. And the other thing you get to see tonight is Brandon Phillips and Justin Upton making their home debuts wearing that Angels red. We're just about ready for baseball here at the Big A. Sit back and relax. See if the Angels can kick off this nine-game homestand with a W. Line up to first pitch when we return.
Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is being brought to you by your local Southern California Land Rover retailers. By Jack in the Box, come try the new $4.99 Smokey Jack Burger combo with small fries and a small drink. Limited time only. And by your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. Welcome back out to the Big A, a uh, warm, sticky night. I don't know, it's kind of weird for September that you get this, uh, I guess, so-called humidity here in Southern California, but uh, it is somewhat odd. But uh, overall, beautiful night. No uh, threat of rain here, although it says 20% chance over the next couple of days. We'll see how that plays out. But that kept saying a tough homestand for the Angels. Every game down the stretch for the Angels for the next three weeks is going to be a tough game considering they're playing for a wild card spot right now. But you've got three against the Astros, three against the Rangers, and three, by the way, against the red hot Cleveland Indians who just won their 20th consecutive victory. I guess that's a good sign yeah, that they're doing that now. They're, they're eventually going to lose the game, so hopefully they'll lose all three when they come into the year. They certainly aren't losing now. Their pitching no. has been off the charts good. Now, the other thing, too, a while back, if you talk about this Houston Astros team, you're talking about winning a division and home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Well, that hasn't happened. They're coming off a four-game sweep at the hands of the Oakland Athletics, and uh, we'll see what they have in store. They've played very good baseball out on the road, and this is what A.J. Hinch's lineup looks like tonight. George Springer will lead things off. He's in center field. Josh Reddick's in right. Jose Altuve at second. Carlos Correa, the cleanup hitter who was not in the lineup the last time dealing with a thumb injury. He's the cleanup hitter at short. Marvin Gonzalez gets the start in left. Alex Bregman at third. Carlos Beltran at DH. Julie Gurriel at first. And it's Brian McCann batting ninth and doing the catching. Taking on Garrett Richards. We mentioned him already. Two starts, eight innings. Seven hits, seven strikeouts, two walks. And, uh, you know, we'll see what he has in store because uh, the Angels, especially with Andrew Heaney going down in his last start, the Angels kind of need to lean on Garrett a little bit to soak up some minutes and be that guy down the stretch. And making that first start at the Big A here since April 25th of 2016 for G. Rich, but he's been very good at home when you think about it, look at those numbers, 15 wins in 2.65 area. Also 5-3 and three in his career versus the Astros, but I think when you look at Garrett tonight, just go out and stay and maintain the velocity and the breaking pitches he had last time out in Oakland. Don't try to do any more. He's going to be around that 70 pitch limit range. So hopefully they'll be quick enough to get to that fourth or fifth inning tonight. Check out the defense that will support him tonight. Upton's in left, trout at center, Calhoun in right. The infield, Balboin and Simmons on the left side, Phillips and Crone on the right, and Maldonado behind the plate. Always feel when G. Rich is pitching well and he's getting a lot of ground ball action. You got a four time gold glove winner at second base. Here tonight making his debut at the Big A. Brandon Phillips wearing that Angel uniform. He's committed seven errors, 59 double plays, turned 982 fielding percentage this season for the four-time Gold Glove winner. George Springer ready to lead things off. This is an Astros team that comes in at 86 and 57. A 13-game lead over the Angels in the American League West. Garrett's first one is up and in for ball one. Jerry Davis is the crew chief. He's calling the balls and strikes. Corey Blazer at first, Pat Hoberg at second, Tony Randazzo at third base. Springer, 293 batting average, 31 home runs, 76 runs batted in. Basically a middle part of the order guy batting that leadoff spot. Great power and seen two pitches already, which is not the norm for Springer. He's usually up there hacking at that first pitch. One to two. Great spot on that 96 mile an hour fastball. Now you have him set up for that slider off the plate down. Springer with a 374 on base percentage. One two. Got him to reach for it. Count remains at one and two. Astros. 45 and 26 away from Minute Maid Park at 40 and 24 within the division. Solid baseball throughout. They certainly missed Carlos Correa in the middle part of their order. Very deliberate for Garrett. Got him to reach for that fastball. 97. That had some cut action too. Yeah. You know, when you look at that deep lineups in the American League, all of baseball, this is two of the deepest lineups in the game between the Astros and the Angels now, especially 
with Justin Upton and Brandon Phillips in the lineup now for the Angels. Very, very deep. Some guys that can steal bases and a lot of power throughout. One, two again. Jammed him. That's going to be a tough play. Richards is covering. Crow flips it to him and they got him. Little stutter step there for Garrett Richards. And anytime we see that, or anybody that's an Angel fan sees that. And he's always going to have that smile <laughs> about that. We go, wow. Hold your breath. Yep. And it looked for a second like CJ was going to take it. I thought he was for a second. I think that's what got Garrett Richards on that one. He jammed him with that fastball in. And he started going towards the base and flipped it over. Is he able to get Springer, who runs very well? And he plays the game the right way every time for Springer. He is trying to beat out anything hit, even if it's going to be a routine out. Always love the way he plays. And it's almost like CJ goes, I thought about it, but I don't think I could have beat him back to first base. That's why you always go over there as a pitcher. Anything hit on that right side of the infield, be there at that bag. There's Josh Reddick. One out, nobody on. Reddick's having a very nice season for Houston. 315 batting average, 13 home runs, 79 runs batted in. A 315 batting average, good for fourth in the American League. Tuve, of course, leads the way at 351. He's on deck. He's hitting 438 against the Angels this season. You know, you would think that a guy like Josh Reddick that uh, goes from being the so-called guy in Oakland, if you will, because he had a pretty good stretch in which he was, then all of a sudden struggled to not having to be but just a number two hitter mm -hmm. with a lineup that is stacked with firepower. You figure he, all right, he can settle in and just be himself. I think being this in this part of the lineup too, Victor, I think you're making a good point. He's back to now, he's using the whole field. And we've seen a number right. of hits hit the left center field. He used to be a guy when he was at Oakland trying to drive the ball out of the ballpark, so he was susceptible to slow curveballs and pitches down and away. One, two. Got him swinging. Fastball at 96. Two down. First strike out for Garrett. Another good fastball going in. Good target set by Martin Maldonado and a target hit at 96 by Garrett Richards. First punch out of the game. A little cut action on that four seamer upstairs. Difficult for any hitter, especially a left handed hitter, to be able to catch up and make contact. Jose Altuve at 351 on the year. 23 home runs, 76 runs batted in. Looks at a strike. We'd say the leader in the so-called clubhouse as far as the American League MVP race is concerned. But as we were talking, yeah. I think Jose Ramirez yes. is closing in quickly for Cleveland. I agree. Looked like he went around. Oh, it too. I'll tell you what, early on, some good movement on his fastball. And you can see the Astros are trying to be patient. They know that Richards is going to be on a pitch count. So generally, you don't see them taking all three batters on their first pitch, but they're up there trying to work the count as much as they can. And when you have a fastball moving like that, I don't see them doing that throughout this game. Back inside, almost got him to, to swing at it. One and two. If you ask us where Mike Trout stands as far as the MVP is concerned, you know, he got off to a great start after coming back off the DL. It's a real good stretch. He's cooled off. He'd have to go crazy offensively over the next three weeks. Never doubt him, though. No, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's true. The thing about Trout, he may do something special like that. Off speed, a little bouncer off the foot. A little slow breaking ball. And you usually don't see that too not, often. Not to, a, not to a right handed batter. But he also knows that. Altuve is so geared up to hitting a hard breaking ball against him. That slow breaking ball, you see if he's out in front. Two outs, nobody on. Altuve in the hole here at one and two. Down goes Altuve. Maldonado hangs on to it in the 1-2-3 first for Garrett Richards. We hit at the bottom of the frame. 
Phillips dropped, up did. Probably got to face this guy with this door. Boy, real good stuff with that top of the first for Richard State on top. Very well with his break of ball along with that 96, 97. Jared Richards as we check out Mike Sosha's lineup for game number 144. Halos at 73 and 70. We'll have Brandon Phillips leading things off at second base. Mike Trout at center. Justin Upton in left. Albert Pools, the cleanup hitter in DH. Cole Cal Calhoun Barbie in right field. Anderson Simmons a shortstop. Luis Valboy to third. CJ Crone at first. Martin Maldonado batting ninth doing the catching as they take on Justin Verlander. This will be his 31st start of the season. Always durable. Seems to kind of put up a lot of innings. 11 and 8 this year with a 3.74 ERA. And as we mentioned in the open, second start since being acquired by the Strohs. Still racking up those punch outs, 183 and 178 innings pitch. My go to is to be successful against Verlander. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes, but when he makes a mistake, you got to crush a mistake and work some counts. When you're ahead of the count, it seems to be the hitters have a better shot at looking for a fastball against him as compared to dealing with his secondary pitches. First one's down and away. One ball, no strikes. Verlander's still one of those guys that, uh, if you don't get him early, kind of settles in. Keeps the velo at a pretty good uh, clip throughout the game. Sometimes he even gets stronger. Yeah, he's generally 92 94 the first couple of innings, and all of a sudden you look up, he's 95 96 97 as the game progresses. Phillips swinging a miss, 1 on 1. Mentioned that start against the Angels back on May 14th here at the Big A. Took the loss to Verlander in six innings, four runs. Five hits, walked five that game. That's a season high while striking out seven and giving up two home runs. Phillips 214 with the Angels. It's being acquired at the beginning of the last road trip. That's pulled down the left field line. That's going to go for extra bases. That'll be his first extra base hit wearing that Angels uniform. And the Angels get a man in scoring position as Phillips strolls into second base. Yeah, turn on the 95 mile an hour fastball from Verlander, a guy that really uses the other part of the field very well. But he was looking fastball. He got one of those good hitters counts, and he got one and lines it right down in that corner for a double. 28th double of the season overall for Brandon Phillips, already in scoring position for Mike Trout. So man at second for Trout. Not kidding, 321, 28 home runs, 62 runs batted in. One for three game. Sunday against Seattle. Winning a home run in that first inning. Hacking first pitch comes up. And, uh, and I like back. that. Remember, we saw that a couple of times on this past road trip where Mike Trout has taken that first pitch, a hittable first pitch, and that was a hittable one right there. Down the straight back. Not real good numbers overall in his career versus. Verlander is two for 16, but those two hits have left the building. Ball and a strike. Verlander is six-time All-Star. Cy Young, an MVP winner in 2011. Look at the year back in 2006.
Brandon Phillips will lead off double standing at first. Pardon me, at second base here in the first. 1-1. One, one. That would stink to have a double and be standing at first. <laughs> You see, I'd, I'd rather try to steal a base instead. That, that would be somehow <laughs> regressing to the mean. <laughs> That's when you know your career's on the uh, on the back nine. <laughs> you get a double when you're standing at first yeah, base. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, well, it tends to happen. Yep. Two balls, one strike. Upton's on deck. Lays off. Three straight breaking balls. After hacking at that first pitch and fouling it back. There's Justin Upton. His home debut as uh, Phillips just did. Trout two for 16 in his career. Against Verlander. 3 one and That's ripped out toward left center field and that is going to be caught. Nice play by Marvin Gonzalez. Phillips gets back to second base. That's an infielder playing yeah. left field. That's infielder type speed to be able to run in and make that play. That looked like it was going to be on the ground, possibly in the gap. Outstanding defensive play by Gonzalez. Tell you what, we've always been big fans of him and his ability to play a number of different positions and playing well defensively. This ball is hit right on the nose, but he was playing towards that gap. He's able to run it down and all balance through. Otherwise, he's going to get it. Brandon Phillips doubled him up at second. Brandon's taking that baseball down too and then sees how quick Marwin Gonzalez closed in on that baseball and caught it. Of course, enough to be able to get back to the base. Really smart move to look over his right shoulder to see if mm -hmm. that ball is going to be caught or get down. So one out. Phillips still at second. And a couple of former teammates facing off here in Upton and Verlander. One for four in his career against Justin. Up to 280 on the year, 28 home runs, 99 runs batted in. One for four, and it was a big double with two RBIs in the eighth inning of Sunday's game. Think about Verlin. He's pretty good as far as slowing down a running game, and Brandon Phillips was trying to tie him and time him and trying to steal third base. 28 career pickoffs for Verlander. Not only a very good pitcher, but fields his position well and slows down a running game. What about? Upton since joining the Angels has hit 294, three doubles, five runs batted in. Get a lot of four seam fastballs from Berlander, upper part of the strike zone. Been a very effective pitch this season for him and throughout his career. There it is once again, upper part of the strike zone at 97. And this upper part of the strike zone, he gets exceptional spin rate on his fastball upstairs. Even though you think you're on it, that late life to it, get a lot of pop ups and swing and misses on his. Four seam fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Verland at 34 years of age. After this year, two more years on his contract. Signed for 2019. Very important to score early on against Verlander. Mentioned how he settles in. Trout with a good swing, thought he was getting that baseball down and score that first run. Now it's up to Justin Upton, who's been very good looking for his 100th RBI of the season. Breaking ball, that's out toward left field. Gonzalez has to go back on this one. He'll make the catch. Two down. Well struck, but nothing to show for. So Pujols will come to the play with two outs at Phillips at second. As we take a look at the Astros defensively, we've seen Marvin Gonzalez out and left already. Springer and center, Reddick in right. Bregman, Correa, Altuve, and Gurriel from third to first. McCann behind the dish. And Correa back at that shortstop position last time. Then it was Bregman playing there. Tied for fifth amongst AL shortstop with a 977 fielding percentage. 
part of 53 double plays turn eight errors at shortstop this season for Correa who's been very good as far as improving each and every year defensively at short for the Astros Astros team that uh, has committed 89 errors on the season for comparison's sake the Angels 72 One ball, no strikes. Interesting to see where Correa is playing at shortstop against Pools. He is playing in that outfield grass, which is a little bit odd, especially we've seen a lot of shifts being put on against Albert with their Altuve would be over there in the dirt in the shortstop area. But Correa way out in that outfield grass. I think that goes to Albert and uh, the and struggles injuries. he's had running the bases. Yep. Even though it's a long time. throw, you're still comfortable with that arm he has. Two balls, no strikes. Plus, it gives you better coverage as a shortstop out there that deep and allows Altuve to play on that second base side of the second base position. That's the first time we've seen this alignment with Albert at the plate. These two teams have met 13 times this year. Halo's 5 and 8 against the Strohs, 2 and 4 here at home. 2 0 pitch. Albert hits one toward the hole. That's what Correa's at. Out of the first base, Pujols retired for the third out. We get a leadoff double, and he is stranded at second. What is the second inning with no score? Four, five, and six coming up for the Houston Astros. Correa, Gonzalez, and Bregman to face Garrett Richards, who faced a minimum three, struck out two in that first inning. Give you an idea of what's going on as far as the uh, Major League Baseball scoreboard. Twins 13-0 leading the San Diego Padres in the seventh inning at Target Field. That's the uh, team right now that the Angels are currently chasing. Yeah, Minnesota could swing the bat. They've had a great year on the offensive side. Joe Maurer seems to be back too. Yep. Seattle leading Texas 10 to 3 in Arlington. That game's in the seventh. Seattle looking to add. They've got the bases loaded. Yankees, by the way, lost to Tampa Bay 2 to 1. Carlos Correa leading things off. He'll swing first pitch and line one right back up the middle. Lead off single to start the second. In my Hyundai key for the Angels to be successful against a very good Houston ball club going a little poison. Nothing but a good time. Just relax in the field, at the plate. Have a good time knowing that you're going to have to play your best baseball to beat a very good Astro club in first inning. Garrett Richards threw the ball well. Correa realized he was doing a lot of first pitch strikes. Jumped on that first pitch there. Here's Marwin Gonzalez. What a season he has had bouncing around 
The infield and now the outfield for Houston. 295 batting average for the switch hitting utility player. 21 home runs. 78 runs batted in. Swing at first pitch, pops it up. Left side, Valbuena calling for it. Simmons calls him off. So amazing what you saw in that first inning. The hitters were taking that first pitch, falling behind, they had to deal with the slider and curveball from Richards. They're looking now, go, you know what? I'm, I'm going right after that first pitch fastball. Back to back hitters swinging away. Gonzalez now just two for 17 in his career versus Richards. Two aggressive hitters there, and now Tuve and Springer that took first pitch fastballs for strikes. One out, one on. Alex Bregman at the plate. 284 batting average for the third baseman. A little bit low. 34 doubles, five triples, 16 home runs, and 58 runs batted in for Bregman. Has rolled into 14 double plays. 23 year old Albuquerque, New Mexico native. And LSU. First round pick by the Shrews in 2015. Good life on his fastball tonight. Saw that life on the fastball in Oakland. Two balls, one strike. It's blocked there by Maldonado. Gray not running quite as much. Missed some serious amount of time this year. Just two stolen bases. Been caught once. Has pretty good speed, though. Gray with a leadoff single on the very first pitch he saw in the second. He stands at first. Check swing foul to a two. Gray up wearing the uh, protective layer over his left arm, hand. His 42 games with the torn thumb ligament. It was as a as a batter he hurt it, so you got to protect it still. There it is. Very similar to one that Mike Trout is wearing. Two two. Bregman shoots one out to center. So two on with one out. Went with a fastball there. It looked like Maldonado wanted that fastball in. It was out over the plate. And Bregman right back up the middle. So that last time in town, he hit everything hard. Early in the season, he was chasing breaking balls. This time he stayed back and lines that fastball. That's a short, compact swing for Bregman. He threw the baseball very well for a single up the middle. Sixteen nothing twins. By the way, they so the Vikings taking on the Chargers there yeah. tonight. They're in the seventh inning, and the Twins have homered in every game. <laughs> Carlos Beltran, the batter, switch hitting DH, batting in the seventh spot. Or so I should say, ex San Diego Chargers now, yeah. Los Angeles Chargers. I'll tell you, they can hit. They have hit the ball very well. And that's not a necessarily a, pitcher, a hitter's ballpark target field. That ball is jumping out of there for the Twins this year.
One ball, one strike. Carlos Beltran, 233, 287 on base percentage. One one popped up behind the plate. Oh, Renato giving it a look, but this one's into the seats. One two count. One thousand seventy six career extra base hits for Carlos Beltran. Second all time among switch hitters behind Eddie Murray. Twenty fifth all time overall. Two away from time. Cal Ripken Jr. A guy that could run into a uh, a double play ball and get Richards out of the second inning. Breaking ball. It's a mistake pitch. Hammered foul. And when you're talking about pitch count for a pitch, you love that ground ball double player. If you can get one right now, if you're Richards against Beltron. Doing a ton of strikes so far, 26 pitches, 20 of them strikes. Fifteen pitches in the first. Adam swinging on the breaking ball down goes Beltran third strike out of the night for Garrett two down another one of those sharp quick sliders down in the dirt because he's thrown 95 to 97 range as a hitter you're trying to gear up quickly to catch up to that fastball then you throw an 89 mile an hour slider that's never really a strike it gets a very good hitter a future Hall of Famer to chase that pitch well out of the strike zone. Yuli Gurriel, the first baseman at the plate. You have to be careful with him jumping on a pitch early. That's why you start him off with a breaking ball. But it's got to be a well located breaking ball against him, also. Correa standing at second, Bregman at first. Way outside. Brian McCann on deck. 1-1 one, one now. Shoots one out to center field. That's going to fall in for a hit. Correa is going to be waved around. Trout up with it. Fires it home, but it'll get cut off. 1-0 Houston. Guriel with his 66th run batted in, and the Astros strike first. All three hits right back up the middle in this inning against Richards. The Astros coming in this game a 283 batting average as a team. Pitch down towards the end of the bat. Still lines it up the middle for an RBI single. And Cray with his good speed scores easily with the first run of the game. Angels behind one to nothing here. Scooby, if I'm not mistaken, all three hits on fastballs. Especially with that wicked slider he's had working. I want the Guriel at 96. McCann takes 
up and in. One ball, no strikes. Ninth place hitter hitting 245. 14 home runs, 55 runs batted in. So the Angels play from behind here in the second. Down one nothing. Two no. McCann won for four in his career against Garrett. Bregman now second, Guriel in first time call. Ground ball towards short. Simmons will take it himself, forces out Yuli. That'll do it for Houston, but they strike for a run on three hits ahead of the bottom of the second. Houston on top one nothing. Season seats and receive pre-sale access to 2017 playoff options. Visit angels.com slash season seats or you can call 888-796-HALO today for more info. one nothing Houston, bottom of the second. Halos at Calhoun, Simmons and Val Buena coming up against Justin Verlander. Angels got a lead off, double off the bat of Brandon Phillips at the bottom of the first but left him stranded there. Cole fouling off the first pitch. 248 batting average, 16 home runs. 65 runs batted in. Had a one for four game on Sunday with a single. See a lot of room right down this third base line, especially for Cole letting that baseball travel. This one for 17 in his career versus Verlander. Looked like he was trying to punch a ball that way. And even more so now, well off the base. A lot of room left side of the infield. You have the three right here, and then you just have this much room to be able to hit a ball down that third baseline. Especially if he's going that high fastball, just punch it down the line. And if they're going to pitch you that way. Cole's done a nice job as far as letting that baseball travel deep enough. All he's got to do is make contact and hit it on the ground, and he'll get a base hit that way.
One, two. Breaking ball, and that's rolled over to first. A little bit of a bobble there by Guriel, but one down. Up steps Andrew Simmons. One for four games Sunday. Snaps it over. Over 18. Handles can use Andrew to back getting warmed up once again. Seven for 38 so far in the month of September. This after hitting 235 in August. In Verlander, you can see he has that fastball working. And look at the numbers against Verlander this season versus his fastball. This is a 219 batting average with eight home runs allowed, 251 versus his secondary pitch, 16 home runs allowed. Popped up. Shallow right center, Altuve drifting out. Two down. A lot of pop ups of labor. Hamilton just getting underneath it instead of sitting back. He's on a, a roll. He'll hit the ball very hard up the middle to right center field. Occasional power to turn on it. He's been getting underneath some pitches there. You see him shaking his head. He knew he had a pitch to do some damage. Missed it. Got to get back to that line drive mode the other way. Two out, somebody off for Luis Valbuena. Five in a row retired by Verlander. Houston up 1 nothing in the second. The pitch was off the plate. Called the strike. Luis a 1 for 4 game. He homered Sunday. Tied the score at 2 in the seventh inning. One ball and strike. It's hit well against his former team this year. Nine for 28 with a home run and seven runs batted in. A slow curveball from Verlander. Well, when it is three for 25 though against Verlander, but one of those hits a home run. That was one of those pitches to do some damage and just missed that one at 96. Two outs, nobody on, and a one-two count on Valbuena. A little too much time, so Luis backs out. No backflip as he backs out of the plate, though. It'd be great if he did that, too. Two-two. Give him time. In due time, right? And you have a catcher that's only caught him one game so far. And Brian McCann, Verlander, has been with the Tigers his entire career. The second start with the Astros. You see a little indecision as far as the signs and how they want to go after Valbuena. Always a work in progress as a pitcher to get that good rapport with the catcher. So you're not even shaking off ever. You just put down that sign. You go through your game plan. With a curveball now. Well, a lot of times you'll see with that two sign, that means that's going to be a pitch away. I remember doing that myself. Three and two, you think break a ball? Three would be a fastball in. 
against a lefty, two being a fastball away. You have one as a breaking ball, wiggle as far as your changeup, or slider. I think this is that chance of being a fastball in. Right, got him with a breaking ball, and down goes Valbuena. One, two, three, second, including the first strike of the game for Verlander. Houston on top as we head to third. Nothing on the uh, two out single by Yuli Guriel. As Garrett Richards faces the top of the order here in the third for Houston, it'll be Springer, Rennick, and Altuve. Retired them in order in the first, including a couple of strikeouts. Garrett threw 15 pitches in the first, 18 in the second. Good decision there to go with a breaking ball, even though that got a lot of the play. Springer was looking first pitch fastball because he took that fastball the first time up. You're seeing a lot more aggressive now against Richards for Astros hitters. The loft speed pitch it misses one ball one strike Springer grounded out to Crone in the first. That's out toward left center field up to moving over. Back up toward the track. One down. See how strong Springer is when he gets his arms extended. That was a pitch upstairs and still hit that one to the warning track in left center field. Up and able to run that one down. See those numbers in the month of September for Reddick. Just under 500, 14 for 29, including 13 RBI. Struck out on a high fastball in the first. Three strikeouts for Garrett, no walks, three hits allowed, all three singles. Nats driven out toward right center field. It's going to stay in the ballpark, I think, and it does. Night time, stays in the yard. All right. Daytime, maybe not. It was, it's a warm night tonight. I thought it just got, he just got underneath that just enough to keep it in off the bat. I thought he might have had a shot getting it out. Last time up, pitch by pitch against Altuve. Outstanding sequence, four seam fastball, outside part of the plate, ran a fastball in off the plate, got a swing on that pitch, went back in again with 96, back to back 96, then 
Do a nice slow curveball at 79, then finish him off with a hard slider out of the strike zone. Good sequence there for Richards against Altuve. Last at bat. You can always tell by a reaction from an outfielder if it's going to have a chance to get down and try this looked like he was in, going to get that one but off the bat the way it sounded especially we just showed the graphic how hot Reddick has been ball on a strike Altuve 11 hit shy of 200 for the season if he leads the league with hits again this year, it'll be four. His fourth consecutive season in which he led that category. Be the first major leaguer to ever do that. That's amazing. Isn't that crazy. Four consecutive seasons of leading the league in hits. That's surprising. That's never been done. I know, before. right? Especially when you think of people like you know, Tony Gwynn, Rod Carew, Boggs, Boggs. Yeah. Yeah. Your guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know. I helped out. <laughs> Adding those hits for him. One, two. This is lifted foul and out of play. I was surprised when I saw that this morning. He is a special player. First player in Major League history to lead the American League or National League in hits four straight seasons. If he leads. He's certainly up there hacking. He's like late great Kirby Puckett was. He was swinging all the time, hitting that baseball, putting in play, even though very aggressive, not necessarily a lot of strikeouts. Okay, I'm getting a, a caveat here to this uh, this thing about Altuve. That one just misses for a full count. Outright leader, I'm being told, from our truck. In four straight years. Ichiro did it for five straight, but he tied for the league oh. lead. See, that's not in the uh, that's not in those notes that the Astros put out. <laughs> I forgot about it, about Ichiro. I mean, he was he's got the all-time hit record for a single season as it is. I was there for that one. Three two, a little bouncer towards short. Simmons gets it. Bounce, gets him. And a one, two, three. Top of the third for Garrett Richards. We head to the bottom of the frame. Halos have eight, nine, and one coming up. Down one nothing. Of the third inning, I'm Alex Curry, and today Cliff Pennington and the Angels kicked off their fill the truck campaign that will be going on throughout the entire Astro series to help collect and then deliver these essential goods to those affected by Hurricane Harvey. Now, this truck will be parked out in front of the home plate gate throughout this entire series from 12 to 8 p.m. today through Thursday. Fans are encouraged to donate non perishable food, bottled waters, basic cleaning supplies, toiletries tools, safety equipment, and fans making a contribution of five or more items at any point during this series 
will receive tickets to that evening's game. And earlier today when I spoke to the man leading the charge, Cliff Pennington, guys, he said he was so impressed and touched by the amount of support he saw from this Angels community. Not surprising That's really at all. good. Angel family tight knit as Crone swings and misses on the very first pitch breaking ball. Angels trying to do their best to uh, support those affected by Hurricane Harvey and as well as Irma. Out in Florida. Devastation in Florida is unbelievable statewide. Ball and a strike on Crone. He'll be followed by Maldonado and Phillips. Another long time in between signs here for McCann and Verlander. Fastball right down the pipe. He takes it. It's one and two. I think right now, Verlander, I'd be real surprised if he did not throw a break of ball off the plate. 33 pitches, 20 strikes, 13 out of the strike zone. So there's been some shots against him. 2-2. Two two. Gave up the leadoff double to Phillips in the first. He's retired six straight since. A couple of baseballs hit pretty hard there in the first trout and Upton both hit it well. Gonzalez made two really good plays out in left center field. 2-2. Two two. Breaking ball popped up. Bregman backing up. One away. And the Red Cross depends on financial donations to be able to provide disaster relief immediately. Help people affected by Hurricanes Harvey and Irma by visiting redcross.org or texting the word Red Cross to 90999 to make a $10 donation. Make that seventh straight retired by Verlander, and that'll bring up our team Maldonado hitting 224 on the season. I didn't notice with this Astros defense, especially in the outfield, they have their outfielders bunched in the middle. There's a lot of room on both corners. And the left field line and right field line. Because of that alignment, that's how Gonzalez is able to run down those two fly balls hit well by Trout and Upton. Figured if you're going to pull it, you get that double down the line like Brandon Phillips. They're going to take away that ball to the gap. Two balls and a strike. Here's the season against Verlander on those two one counts when you put it in play. 467. That's 14 for 30. That's 64% of the time this season. Verlander has thrown a 2 1 fastball. See if he stays with that pattern and see if Maldonado can catch up to one of those fastballs. Got a fastball, but up around his neck. It's two and two. That's the pitch you keep saying. You're going to see pitchers, more hitters continue to try to lift the baseball, that lift type swing. You're going to get eaten up alive up there with that high, hard fastball. It doesn't have to be necessarily firm either yep. when you locate it upstairs. And when you mix in the fact that the, the spin rate on his four-seam fastball for Verlander. And he's throwing a lot more of four-seam fastballs this season as compared to his sinker. That's why you see the batting averages is 219 combined versus his fastballs. The higher the RPM or re revolutions per minute, the more the ball stays up, mm -hmm. the longer it stays up, as opposed to it dying near the uh, home plate area, giving it the, uh, the illusion that it's a rising fastball, but it just stays on plane. You look at the highest as far as 
Spin rate on the four seam fastball. Berlander is at that top. That's why he's been so impressive. Even as he's progressed in his career, his fastball has still been very, very good. Two down. Because you're aware of that four seam fastball upstairs, you're more apt to chase it, break a ball out of the strike zone. That's exactly what happened to Maldonado. We look at our tools of trade brought to you by Ram Trucks, and we talk about that four seam fastball. Upper part of the strike zone, that spin rate, 97, 95, getting those pop ups, a lot of fly ball action, and foul balls and swing and misses with that four seamer upstairs. That's what makes Verlander so effective. Phillips doubled the bottom of the first. One for one. First extra base hit as an angel. Another one of those four seam fastballs upstairs. And Birdlander, when you look at percentages, 34.9% ground ball percentage. He gets a lot of swing and misses and a lot of fly balls, mainly because of his ability to run that fastball upstairs. Two on. Three one. Trout on deck. And we talk about that spin rate, average spin rate on his four seam fastballs. 2,538 RPMs. You Darvish below him. Max Scherzer, Sonny Gray, Tyler Chatwood, too, with that four seam fastball spin rate upstairs. Good old Chatty. 3 1 pitch. This ground ball to short. Gray has got it. And goes down in order. We've played three here at the big A. And the Angels down 1 nothing. As we take on the Rangers at 707, fans in attendance will receive a Rebel Pilot Rally Monkey while supplies last. For more information on that monkey, go to angels.com. We start the fourth. 
Houston on top one nothing a two out single by Yuli Gurriel the only scoring in this one that was back in the second. It'll be Correa Gonzalez and Bregman. And it was Correa that started off that second inning with a base hit up the middle. He's the one that scored the run. And he jumped on the first pitch fastball lined it back up the middle. All three hits were on fastballs right back up the middle. Correa one for one with that base hit. All three hits allowed by Garrett Kamen that second. With that two seam fastball inside. 95 from Richards. He almost has to throw a two seam. Yes. Try to throw what they call the arm side to right handed yeah, batter. He cannot throw his four seam. It's going to cut back over to plate. That's what would happen with Bregman. That's lined to center. A hang up for Trout. That got in on him just yeah. enough. Okay, yeah. If he throws that four seamer, it drifts out at all. That's troubles. Marva Gonzalez popped down in the second. Gonzalez has played every position for the Astros except pitcher, catcher over the last three seasons. It's only a matter of time, yes. you think. I think he'll get a chance to pitch at some point. Why wouldn't he be the, the emergency catcher? Yeah. Right? I mean, we've seen his hands, real good hands, anywhere he's played. And he's turned into a really good first baseman along when he's played the middle infield and third yeah. base. I mean, he's a shortstop coming up, so you know he's got a good arm, so you put him on the bump. Trying to butt his way on. Fouls at one and two. Several years ago, I think Sosha wondering if a baseball made contact with him outside the batter's box. Looked like it was in the box. When yeah, I thought hit. he was still in the batter's box from our angle. But uh, going back to before Correa, you know, it was Marvin Gonzalez, Jonathan VR. Two guys splitting time at shortstop for the Astros. VR ended up having a pretty solid career with Milwaukee. A very good season last year. If I'm not mistaken. One, two. Very few overthrown curveballs. That's the one pitch because he has that finger, the index finger, off the baseball. So he's got to stay back a little bit longer to be consistent with his curveball. 35 strikes of his 51 pitches thrown. The bouncer. Richard off the mound, has it, going to apply the tag, and he does. That's the right move. That's what you want to do as a pitcher. You take out that throw, the first base, you catch the baseball, and you apply the tag. And Richard's off the mound pretty quickly. He's able to field that. And get that tag in on Gonzalez. What is that second hand doing near the glove? What is it, two hands? <laughs> I've never seen this before. Uh, that's how you're taught from Little League on, but then you just forget about that as, yeah. the, as you progress in your career. But well done by Garrett Richards. Not as cool when you get older? No. <laughs> Very nice. Two outs, and here's Bregman. Base hit into center, his first time up. Well, that's a sharp breaking ball. Got the call. That might have been a little bit off the plate, but that was sharp. Late breaking. Slow down a little bit in the month of September. Very, very hot in July and August, but good swing is first at bat. No balls, two strikes on the Astros third baseman. Blake Wood warming up in the bullpen for the Angels. 54 pitches. My social told me today it would be a max at 70. 
try to get through four innings. Down goes Bregman. Why take him out? Another economical inning. A one, two, three frame. He's retired seven straight. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Angels down one nothing. Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is being brought to you by the Ram Rebel. Make the most of your summer at the Ram Summer Clearance Event going on now. And by USAA Insurance, banking and investments tailored for the military community. Halo's down one nothing as we start the bottom of the fourth. Mike Trout to lead things off. He'll be followed by Upton and Pools. Four solid so far for Garrett at 55 pitches, four strikeouts. As we mentioned, going to break, seven straight retired by the righty. Nobody warming as of right now. It looks like he's got the uh, face of a guy that's coming back out for the fifth. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have been real comfortable if I'm Mike Sosha going by Garrett Richards right now and saying, I think you're good. And he'll say, no, I'm not. I'm still real strong at this moment. Trout lined out to Gonzalez and left. Head of the count of two balls, no strikes. And I think when you look at the reason why Trout doesn't have quite that batting average, does have some power numbers against Verlander, is Verlander's ability to use the four-seam fastball. Now, Trout's got great numbers on a sinker, not as much on a high fastball. This one down the line toward the corner, slicing away from Reddick into foul territory. And a couple of rows in. I didn't think Reddick was going to slow down. No. And going back to what Trout has done in the past, it's worthy of a Carl's Cam replay against Justin Verlander earlier this season. That back on May 14th, that was an off-speed pitch. He turned on to hit that one way out to left field for Trout. Two home runs in his career against Verlander. It's two for 17 overall, though. Every pitch in the sequence against Trout by Verlander has been away. Up to non deck. 3 1 in there, breaking ball. Here comes the payoff. Breaking ball, and it's bounce foul. Stay back on that well, just enough to be able to fight that one off. At the slide of the pitch before, a curveball on that one. 
percentage of the pitches this season. 58% Verlander fastballs, 21 slider, 16 curveball, about 4% or so with his changeup. Another payoff. Walked him. Leadoff man on board. First free pass issued. Oh, the Astros right hander snapped a string of nine straight retired. This season, Verlander's allowed nine stolen bases in 10 attempts. He's has one pickoff. Mentioned earlier, 28 career pickoffs. Trout stole a base against Verlander earlier this season on a delayed steal. Back throw to first. Because of that delayed steal, Verlander paying a lot of attention to Mike Trout. Brian McCann this season has struggled throwing out base stealers. is 13% for McCann behind the plate. And a quick move. Well, when you look at Verlander's uniform right here with the Astros, not all that different for the uniform he wore on the road with the Tigers. Very similar colors. That is familiar, number 35. Francisco Liriano had it. They moved him to the side for, yes. for Justin Verlander. It's a tough pitch down and into a right-handed batter. Even if you make contact, that would be very difficult to keep fair. It almost seemed like that might have been a changeup there from Verlander. Does have that power type changeup. That was at 90. Yeah, that's a more conventional fastball there off the plate at 94. He's been on a pretty good run over his last 12 starts. Six and three with a 2-2-5 ERA going back to July 8th. He's got himself a 1-0 lead. We're in the fourth. The leadoff walk to Trout. He's at first. Really paying attention to Trout. I think mentioned that before. That stolen base against him. Going back to earlier this season. Well, you saw that delayed steal in that May 14th, you see a little stutter step and then going to get into scoring position when Verlander was on the Tigers. And it's not it's not easy to get a big lead against Verlander. And he had a little speed up there, a little quick pitch. So Trout timed him as far as not a big lead, but get a little secondary lead and then going on a delayed steal. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I think that was Mother's Day. Yes. A lot of pink. A little bigger lead. One two count on up to Pujols on deck. Ground ball to short. Dug out by Gurriel. Two down. So base is clear for Albert. Grounded out his first time up. Nine game hit streak for Albert. 18 to 37 during that stretch. A little different now. You have Altuve playing over on that shortstop side of the bag now. And still Correa in that outfield grass. 
A lot of room right here for Albert to hit the ball, and he's been hitting the ball very well to center, to right center field, letting the baseball travel a little deeper. Albert looking to add on as far as that home run total. Does have a home run against Verlander. Still tied with Jim Tomey on the all-time home run list with 612. Pulls out with a foul off his foot. Ken Griffey Jr. next up on that home run list at 630. Is that list? Junior at 6.30. Say hey, kids, 6.60. Fifth all time. Brown ball to third. Bregman's got it. Nothing happening for the Angels here in the fourth. We head to the fifth inning. Garrett Richards looks like he's taking the mound. The Angels down 1 nothing. On with host Chris Carter and Nick Wright as they kick off the day. The latest in sports. First things first, weekdays at 6.30 a.m. Eastern on FS1. As we start the fifth here at the Big A, the opening game of a nine-game homestand. The Angels trailing the Astros one to nothing. It'll be the bottom third of the order coming up. For Houston to face Garrett Richards. That's four strikeouts, no walks, and three hits allowed. Beltran, Gurriel, and McCann. 15 pitches in the first, 18 in the second, 12 in the third, just 10 in the fourth inning. John, one pitch, bouncer to second. One down. Boy, you love to see them with Richards on the mound as that pitch count still very manageable. 56 of them. Now into the fifth inning with one out.
One for one with an RBI single. 66th run batted in for Guriel. Toad one. Good break ball still excellent as far as the velocity of that slider too at 89. McCann on deck. 2-2 Two -two on the way. That's out towards center field and off the end of the bat. Falls in there. Went back to that fastball away. Second time tonight that Gurriel's got one off the end of the bat for a single. So he's on board for McCann. And the second time he's tried to go in with a fastball that drifted out over the plate. Like Wood, who's up last inning, he's up again. McCann 0 for 1, fielder's choice at end of the second. And that fastball upstairs and we talked about Verlander using his four seam fastball with good effect upstairs Garrett Richards doing the same and going way back to that first start of the season as far as spin rate on his four seam fastball he was at the tops in baseball before missing all that time and making that second start of the season back in Oakland just the other day. Ground ball towards second. Should be a double play that ends the inning. Send him back out for the sixth. Why not? What an excellent effort. Pitches. Excellent effort tonight by Garrett Richards getting a good round of applause walking off the mound. Angel still down though. One to nothing. Bottom of fifth coming up. I think he wanted to come back out. Mike Sosha basically said that he has seen enough after 63 pitches. Now again, I said, figure, come send him back out. Hey, see, I, I got one more. I got one more. But Mike Sosha playing 
you know, he's, he's bigger than this is his second star coming back in five months, but his stuff was excellent. Very difficult to take him out. But I love what he did. I got one more. Yeah. Knowing the importance of this game. If the so-called magical number 70 pitches, he's at 63. Let him go out there, see if he can get a one pitch out. He's got the top of the order coming up. And you know they're going to be swinging first pitch. Now see if he gets some run support here against Verlander, who's been very good himself. Just one hit allowed. That was a leadoff double to Brandon Phillips. Cole grounded out to Gurriel in the second. A little jam shot towards second base. Altuve with the shift on is able to haul it in. One out. Back toward the middle, Correa to his left. Gonna go for two. Two down here in the fifth. Valbuena coming up. Just two base runners tonight against Verlander. The double by Phillips in the first. The lead off walk to Trout in the fourth. Nothing else. When he's needed to, Verlander's made quality pitches and we has been around the strike zone enough where he's getting hitters to swing at non strikes very well here tonight whether it's above the strike zone or off the outside corner. There's a reason why he has 184 career wins. That's one of those pitches though if you're ready that's the one you got to jump on. That's on the inner half against Valbuena who has good pull power. That might be your best pitch. Hopefully Verlander will make another mistake in this sequence, but that could have been the best one. Two strikeouts for Verlander. Valbuena was one of them. Then the second. Painting the fastball just a little bit off the outside corner. A one, two, three, fifth for Justin Verlander. We head to the sixth inning. One, nothing, Houston.
Let's take a look at our top tier plays. Brought to you by Arco. Garrett Richards on top of his game tonight. Had a good fastball going, 95-96. Ran that fastball up, got a lot of quick outs. Excellent throughout this ball game. Five innings. G. Ritz tonight. Slider was very good. Curveball was excellent. And this is a very deep, powerful offense. Held him just the four hits with that break the ball. Outstanding. But his velocity on this fastball has to be something that the Angels are really, really happy to see. G. Ritz tonight. Mike <laughs> Wood takes over on the mound here as we start the sixth inning. It sounded like Sanford and Son as far as the background music is concerned. <laughs> 63rd game, <laughs> two and four record of 5.97 ERA combined between. That's the power I have. <laughs> I'm listening to you talk, and I hear the saxophone in the background. I'm like, all right, all right, yeah, I'm feeling it, yeah. Oh man, Springer, Reddick, Altuve for the Strohs <laughs> here in the sixth inning. <laughs> Springer lines went out to right center field, one pitch, and a leadoff single. Now you're going to have to deal with Springer at first base. 63 pitches, by the way, for Garrett Richards. Three hits, four strikeouts, no walks. Redick 0 for 2, a strikeout, and a fly ball to center. One ball, no strikes. Springer with five stolen bases, but been caught seven times. Blake Wood pitching in his eighth game since coming over to the Angels. Nine innings, ten hits, eight runs. One of the strikeouts, two walks, and he falls behind here, 2-0. and oh. Long look account where you might see Springer on the move. Redick has rolled into nine double plays. Two on. Chasing a high fastball. Two and two. Full count. Altuve on deck. Imagine he's on the move here. Spring red first. Lickwood sensing that also. Maldonado has thrown out 40% of base dealers this season. Chance to strike him out, throw him out. Wood takes off, or probably Springer takes off on Wood. Springer heads back to first. 
another full count. Boy, a lot of pitches upstairs in this sequence against Reddick. A couple of them well off the plate. Yet he's went after it. Now Tube on deck. Leaning. The Angels have picked him off a number of times, Springer. A couple years ago, when Jared Weaver picked them off. Springer takes off. Reddick pulls one. Glove by Crawl. He touches first base. That's an unbelievable play. Reddick, no question. One down. And with Springer on the move, he's going to walk home if Krona is unable to make that play. What a play. That baseball was by him. Gets off the base and hooked it right down the line, Reddick. But C.J. Krohn able to catch that and tag that base with the glove. See how far that baseball was by him when he reacted. Great play. One of those plays. If you look back and you take a lead or stay close in this game, that could be one of those key plays made. Now, Tuve bouncing this one to Simmons. He'll take down with a man in scoring position, two outs. Still another dangerous hitter coming into play in Carlos Correa. Got Altuve out in front. Correa one for two. Single with a run scored in the second. A fly ball to center's last time up. Good location on that one, even to count the ball to the strike. What? Ray, a little bit more patient, didn't chase that breaking ball out of the strike zone. And try the chase. Only three of those four pitches in this at bat against Correa have all been on this exact same spot. Break the ball is well off the plate. Still, there's an open base. You don't have to challenge him necessarily with a fastball over the plate. Marvin Gonzalez on deck. Springer at second base with two outs. One nothing Houston. Oh, 
lot of the plate on that pitch. I think right now, if you're Blake Wood, you got to try to get Carlos Correa to swing it a non-strike. Three, two, got him. Tied him up with a fastball in. Down goes Correa. And we'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning with the Angels down one nothing. Could be Tuesdays up next. My favorite soccer team? Uh, well, being United States, I, I like to follow all the FIFA stuff, the um, international stuff. The World Cup's obviously a big hit in the locker room, and it's one of probably one of my favorite sporting events to watch. So I have to go with the United States. I like the Barcelona because a lot, they got a lot of priority. So a lot of players play there. It's, it's a good team. Barcelona. Barcelona. Yes. I like Messi. I like Neymar, but uh, Neymar uh, has a. Uh, New team right now, but I stay with Barcelona because I love Messi, because I love how I play. Why I love to see that passion, and even talking to Anderson Simmons and CJ Crone, how much they love to watch soccer. They're always playing video games. I think for me, Galaxy, obviously a local team playing always well, but my son has me watching the Liverpool Reds team. And he's been pretty adamant about making sure that I become a fan of them, and I have been now for the last year or so. They've been they're pretty good. We're getting more and more into that soccer field. We get closer to the World Cup before we know it. It can be addicting, that's for sure. Yes. Passionate. One out, nobody off for Martin Maldonado. The Angels with a couple of base runners. That's it. It is Justin Verlander tonight. Martin struck out on the third. 0 for 1. That high fastball once again. Two down. Top of the order now. Phillips. Hey, join the Angels this Saturday. Rangers are in town at 6 p.m. and enjoy first game. Nick Jonas concert presented by Strikeout Slavery. Tickets available at angels.com slash promotions. Tampa Drosian takes the mound in the bullpen. Coming on for the... Uh, Seventh inning.
Our good buddy Rogo chimed in on Twitter. About your uh, your diss if you will of the. Uh, LAFC Los Angeles Football Club. Oh. Join oh, yeah. the fold. <laughs> Next match. Rogo, I always have to, uh, I'll have to listen and watch now with him. He's the big soccer guru. Yes, he is. All over it. The ball is two strikes on Phillips, is one for two. He does a lot of that. Uh, Rogo is Mark Rogadino, by the way. I believe still doing some Clippers. He does that next gen VR, virtual reality broadcasting for basketball games. There's some, I think, at soccer as well. 0 2. High fastball once again. That four seam fastball upstairs. What were you saying about Verlander uh, settling in? Yeah. He does just that. We're headed to the seventh. Halo's down. Minnesota Twins beat San Diego 16 to nothing. First team ever to homer in each of the first seven innings of that game. Seattle beats Texas 10 to three. Three run home run by Kyle Seeger and Ben Gamble. Seattle wins that second game that set against the Texas Rangers. And now let's take a look at our big story around the majors. The biggest story there is the Cleveland Indians looking for 20 straight victories. Francisco Lindor goes yard. That's all Corey Kluber would need as he goes the distance as Cleveland wins their 20th game in a row. Kluber on his way to potentially again another Cy Young. They've outscored their opponent during that stretch 134 to 32. They want a 20 game win streak for Cleveland. Their pitching staff has been off the charts. Cam Bedroja coming into the game will be his 41st game the season. Six and four mark, 3.32 ERA. 46 punch outs in 38 innings pitched. Marwin Gonzalez is going to step in there against Cam here. Trying to keep this a 1-0 deficit. Blake Wood goes an inning, gives him a hit, and strikes out a man. The seventh has Gonzalez, Bregman, and Beltron. One ball, two strikes. Gonzalez clearly not happy with that call. Well, Jerry Davis, home plate umpire, has seen a lot of 
four seam fastballs upper part of the strike zone throughout this game from Richards Verlander Blake Wood and now Cam Bedrosian upper part of the strike zone. One, two. Got him looking. Gonzalez knew it. One away. Talk about painting a fastball. Cam Drozen be able to paint that fastball right on that outside part of the plate. Framed very well by Martin Maldonado. Gets the call. Gonzalez knew it. Bregman one for two, a base hit to center the second. Struck out looking in the fourth. One to one. That is, two. that is a late movement on his fastball because Maldonado wanted that pitch away and it ran started away but ran it inside. Boy Bregman has a real short compact swing. Missed off the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Astros run in the uh, second inning. Two out base hit by Yuli Gurriel. Only scoring in this game so far. East Coast game has come to an end, Gooby. The Phillies have walked off on the Marlins at the bottom of the 15th inning. 9 to 8. The pitcher's duel there. Something like that. Well, that Hoskins kid for the Phillies hit another home run, the youngster. Been swinging the bat well. J.D. Martinez hit another home run for the Diamondbacks. Does he have 22 and 40 something games or whatever since joining Arizona? Talk about a huge pickup. Uh, yeah, he's going to hit the market as a free agent. <laughs> Perfect timing. This one out to right. Cole has a beat on it. That's stress in Houston. And this copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of the Los Angeles Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. So two outs, nobody on, and Carlos Beltran coming to the plate. By the way, that ball Bregman hit had some carry out to. Uh, I thought that was going to be a routine fly ball. Yeah. It just kept drifting. But the baseball's not juiced, apparently. Nope. 
Carlos 0 for 2. Strike out a ground out. He will pop this one up on the third base side. Now Buena drifting over. Runs out of room. Gary Pettis. I know he's getting a little grief. Yeah, tell him he should jump over that railing and make the catch. <laughs> well, he used to do that with regularity. Yeah. We're just going go, over the wall. Go down the steps. <laughs> and they come back out. Come hey, I got, I got it. <laughs> this one pulled down the right field line, but hooking foul. Oh, 2 upstairs. One ball, two strikes. Two outs here in the seventh. The Angels in the bottom of the seventh have Trout, Upton, Pujols to so try to figure out Justin Verlander. About as good as we have seen him. When you think about it, not real good numbers in this ballpark in his career, though. So far in the night, he's been very, very good. Not just two base runners. Just doubled by Phillips and a walk to Trout. Just missed low. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball on the left side. Angleton's got it to the backhand. The one, two, three, seventh for Canva Drozier. Stretch time here at the Big A. Mike Trout to lead things off. It's Justin Verlander with the Angels down one nothing. The score of one to nothing with the Trout due to lead things off against uh, Justin Verlander up to the follow then pool holes and uh, we walk inside our broadcast booth and we we're talking about spin rate earlier about the uh, baseball staying in the upper part of the strike zone. It's been very effective for Verlander tonight. Yeah, when you think about it, we talk about creating that that angle to be able to lift the ball out of the ballpark. But when you have that four seam fastball, what it's doing is getting to this part of the bat, creating a lot of pop ups or swing and misses with that angle you're trying to swing at as far as the hitter, as far as that four seam and that spin rate on a four seam fastball upstairs. 
Five strikeouts for Verlander, including two the last inning. Trout 0 for 1 with a fly ball to left and a walk. And there's that four seam fastball right on cue upstairs. Three infielders on the left with Trout up. Talked about how that velocity increases as the game progresses for Verlander, 96-97 here in the seventh. It's still very manageable as far as his pitch count, this 81. That pitch that Trout just fell off to the right was right down the middle. That's why I picked that long walk around the home plate area. We talked about even when a pitcher is dealing, you're going to make a mistake in a sequence. That was that mistake of Trout foul the back. You hope to get another one. It's not a guarantee against a pitcher like Verlander, though. Two two. Fouled off the right. Almost got the exact same pitch again, but that one in 97. Tired of waiting, backs out. Another 2 2. Tried to run that one back at 97. And you could notice him, he was shaking off. That was by design to me, by McCann. That's a, a sign you'll give to shake the thumb, and then you go right back to a fastball. A lot of times when you shake off, you think you're going to throw a breaking ball. A lot of room at left field corner for Trout. 3-2. Watch out. That hit him. So Trout on board for the second time. You know, a lot of boos here, but there's by no way was Justin Berlander trying to hit him. He's trying to run that fastball. He didn't want to make a mistake because he made two in that sequence with his fastball against Trout. Trout fouled him straight back. Tries to run this fastball upstairs, but gets him right on that guard he has on his tricep area of his left arm. Hear that sound, even with that protection, that's a lot of sound. Now this track will on the move here now. He did not go in the fourth inning with Upton at the plate. Breaking ball just misses. That almost looked like it was a cross up because that was a strike. That was right down the heart of the plate. Uh, again, I don't know how you have a cross up there with no one at second base. See McCann, he's thinking fastball. And if he's able to frame that the right way, that's all over the strike zone. I wonder, I wonder if Trout's going to go right now, anticipating a fastball. Foul back. Out of play. One ball, one strike. Up to fly ball to left and double play. Now it's time for the driver's seat brought to you by the new 2017 Kia Sorrento. Most RBIs in the majors since July 30th entry today. Stanton with 41. Justin Upton just behind him at 38. Jada with 38. Albert Pujols. Anthony Rizzo with 35 apiece since July 30th. Two balls, one strike. Let me put it in perspective. That's 38 RBIs for Upton. That's in 38 games. Always a count where Mike Sosha's been very comfortable 
sending a runner, especially with the speed of Trout, 20 stolen bases this season. Two, two. Trout hit by a pitch to start the seventh. One down. Chase the breaking ball. The sharp break of ball that never was a strike, but that late break enough on it to get up and to go after it. Albert twice is grounded out to the left side. Once the short, once the third. The only run of this game back in the second inning. And the trout being held on. So much room in that right side of the infield. Only 91 pitches in this game for Verlander, but with Trout on base a couple times, that added about another 10 throws over the first base, it seems to be. Still remembers that delayed steal that Trout had against him. Two pitches for Verlander, very economical. We're in the seventh. Two and one. AJ Hinch looking on, giving a sign to McCann. I don't know if that more of a throw over the first base here. Two one. Two two. Hey, boy, this is as good as a break of ball that I've seen from Berlander in a long time. Talked about his velocity on his fastball, especially that four seamer upstairs has been very effective. But his break of ball has been very good between his slider and his curveball tonight. Got to believe Trout's on the move this time. Thought maybe Altuve would move over a little bit towards that second base area. Stay in exactly the same spot every pitch here in the sequence against Pujols. Three on that left side of the infield, the entire right side open. Trout takes off, 3-2, and popped out toward right center. Not very deep. Trout has to hustle back. Springer will call for it, make the catch. Two down. So Cole coming up.
0 for 2. Ground ball to first and second, and a little soft line out to Altuve in the fifth. No balls, two strikes. He's getting a lot of hitters to chase that high fastball throughout. We talk about upstairs with the fastball, down and away with his break of ball. Next pitch will be pitch number 100 of the game for Verlander. Something he's accustomed to doing late in the game and a lot of pitches thrown. Keenan Middleton, Yasmero Petit getting ready. Verlander's averaging 107.3 pitches per start. Only Chris Sale with more. Halos get the leadoff man on board again and leave him stranded at first base. We're headed to the eighth inning. Houston on top one nothing. Twenty fourth birthday, trying to keep this a one run game as we head to the top of the eighth inning. Ken French back with you right outside the big A. Reminding you, don't forget, following this one, it's Angels Live, presented by your SoCal Mazda dealers with myself, Jose Mota, Tim Sam, and Alex Curry. And the focus will be around the starting pitching tonight. Been a lot of fun to watch. Garrett Richards taking to the hill at the big A for the first time in over 16 months. Goes five innings, giving up just one run. But Justin Verlander has been dominant. He's got a one hit shutout through seven innings. And of course, we'll look around the league, bring you some of the scores and highlights as they pertain to the American League wildcard chase and show you how the Cleveland Indians won their 20th straight ball game here tonight. We'll also show you some of the relief efforts that Cliff Pennington, the Halo, has been doing here 
throughout the course of the first three games of this homestand to uh, benefit the victims of Hurricane Harvey. That and much more on the postgame show. Right now, we sit back inside the Victor and Gooby, guys. Well, at uh, Frenchy, as we start this eighth inning, Guriel McCann and Springer, 8 9 and 1, coming up to face the 24 year old, now 24 year old, Keenan Middleton. Shares a birthday with my son, who turned 12 today. Happy birthday. He's sleeping. Tyler. Don't worry about it. No, he's not. He's watching. Oh, trust me. He's watching. He's gone. Wake up. Tyler, wake up. 56th game for Keenan. I just text me, by the way. He's up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure he did. 4.590 RA for Middleton. 49 innings. 53 punch out. This one bounced toward Val Buena. Bear hey! hands hey! What a play. Yeah. Unless Guriel's hurt. They're going to go check on him. Uh, I didn't think Valbuena had any shot at all. No. Guriel was where jogging was, down the line. Where he was playing, he's sitting down quickly. He didn't look comfortable as he sat down in that dugout. You see where Valbuena is playing. He's playing back. He's charging on that baseball all in one motion. Got a lot on the throw, but didn't look comfortable running down that line. You see a number of the Astros players looking at him as he's going down the line also. Not even able to really even stretch out as far as getting to that base. There's Brian McCann, 0 for 2. Fielder's choice and a double play ball. Takes a strike. And right there, it looks like he got uncomfortable going down the line because that's an easy hit for him. Why is he looking at Valbuena? Twice. One one. Probably two and one on the can. Line toward right center field. Look it down for a hit and more. Trout a little slip there out in the uh, on the warning track. McCann with a one out double. That right down the heart of the plate, and he was able to drive that into the gap. Twelfth double of the season for McCann. Go along with his 14 home runs and a triple. See Trout with that slip there in the warning track. A triple that McCann hit was here. Proved to be a game winner. Same part of the ballpark, too, if I remember correctly. Right center field. Springer one for three. He had a single in the sixth inning. Garrett Richards, the starter, went five. Gave up three hits, one run, four strikeouts. Blake Wood went one inning, gave up a hit. Bedrosian one inning with one strikeout. Good pitch down and in. That's changeup. I think that pitch has been very effective for Keenan Middleton. At times his slider is unhittable, but sometimes it flattens out. That changeup has been pretty good for him. The ball's two strikes. Springer chases two down. Three straight off speed pitches there. For Keenan Middleton versus Springer. 
change up once again. Straight down action on it. Raddick hitless tonight, 0 for 3. Takes a strike. Punched down to the first, a fly ball to center to the third, grounded out to Crone. That was a terrific play by C.J. Crone. With Springer on the move from first, Crone laying out to his left, robbing Reddick of would-be extra bases and an RBI. Quick conversation what they want to go with on an 0-2 kill. You're at the advantage as a pitcher. Try to expand. Make him chase. Try to get him to chase that slider down and in. One ball, two strikes. McCann standing at second base with two outs. Reach for this one. It's a fair ball. Crone's got it. And we'll head to the bottom of the eighth inning with the Angels trailing at 1 0. West is being brought to you by Subaru. Love it out there. Find it in the all-new 2018 Subaru Crosstrek. And by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffINS.com. The bottom of the eighth inning. Houston on top by the score of one to nothing. Verlander's back out of the bump after a hitting Trout to lead off the seventh and retire the next three in order with a strikeout. Fly ball to center to strikeout. It'll be Simmons, Valboy, and Crone. He's got uh, a couple of new defenders. They've shifted things around. I'll tell you about that here in a moment. 
as Andrelton steps in. He's 0 for 2. A pop up and a ground out. Breaking pitch. This one's out toward left field. It's Josh Reddick, the new left fielder, making the catch for round number one. One pitch to start this eighth inning. There's the first down. Jake Marizic's at center field. That moves Springer to right. Reddick over to left. And Marla Gonzalez, who started the game in left field, takes over for Yuli Guriel at first base. Valbuena twice has struck out against Justin Verlander. And he takes a fastball right down the pipe for strike one. Shift on, but Bregman stays in near the cut of the grass and between third and short. Two balls and a strike. Staying away, forcing Valbuena. If he's going to hit one out, it's going to have to go the other way. Late in the game, the veteran like Verlander, a successful veteran, is going to force a power hitter to hit the ball out the other way against them. Slice foul, 2-2. Two -two. Mentioned averaging 107.3 pitches per start, getting close to that now. Next pitch will be 106 of the game for Verlander. Mentioned his last 12 starts have been very good. Only twice tonight he's faced more than three batters in one inning. And that was four in the first, four in the seventh. That's it. 2-2. Two -two. Down goes Valbuena for the third time tonight, two outs. Take a look at the in-game box score, and there's not going to be a whole lot on it. Told you. One hit by Phillips. That led off the bottom of the first inning. He was stranded in scoring position. Eight punch outs for Verlander. One walk, one hit batter. Giles getting ready. He has been in complete command throughout this game, Verlander. Inside and outside, up and down in the strike zone. One ball, one strike. CJ popped down to third and grounded a short. 0 for 2. Consistent with that velocity, 96. A lot of mileage on that arm. A lot of innings, a lot of pitches. Still real consistent with his velocity. 109 of the eighth inning is pretty good for him. Yes. Guy's never really been afraid of running up the pitch count early. 2 1. And then you get that borderline call. See, that's about a half a baseball off the corner. You would think that that would set up the breaking yeah, I, ball here. I'd be stunned if he didn't throw a breaking ball now. 2-2. Two, two. There it was. Just too far out. If he throws that on the outside part of the play, you get a swing and a miss. Or if, or if he makes contact, it's a cue shot foul. 
Full count with two outs. See if C.J. Crone, who is strong, could get a mistake pitch here. Called strike three, a breaking ball. Catches the top part of the zone. We're off to the ninth inning with the Angels down one nothing. Being brought to you by Hyundai. There's no better time to buy a new Hyundai than now. See your local Hyundai dealer or visit buyhyundai.com. By Fios by Frontier. Get the best price ever on Fios TV, internet, and voice by Frontier. Visit FiosByFrontier.com today. It's the top of the ninth inning as Merrill Petit takes over on the mound. The Angels down one nothing. Justin Verlander, one hit through eight innings, nine strikeouts, and a walk. We had Giles warming up. It looks like uh, that's going to be it for uh, Verlander making his second start. Since joining the Houston Astros, that's a Petit on the bump. He's going to face Altuve, Correa, and Gonzalez in the Astros' half of the ninth inning. Last time out was Sunday. Picked up the save, third of the season. Altuve 0 for 3. Off the plate. One ball, one strike. Anyway, Jerry Davis has been pretty good behind the plate throughout this whole game. Even that last pitch that CJ Crone thought maybe a little bit off the plate, that just it got the corner, upper part of the strike zone, that breaking ball. One two. Altuve chops this one toward the hole. Backhanded by Simmons. Got rid of it quickly. Crone digs it out. One away. It's the third time in a row he's hit a ground ball to Anderson Simmons. Tonight. Oh for four for the punch out. It's a little more difficult play here for Anderson Simmons that 
A little bit of a short hop on the backhand across the diamond and a one hop throw. Good scoop there by CJ Crone. Carlos Correa, one for three. He had a single and a run scored back in the second. Pretty close to being a strike. One and out. Spot there. Talk about being able to paint corners in all four quadrants of the strike zone. This Mary Petit has been very good this season. One ball, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball over to third. Valboyne has got it. Two down. Hey, the most popular way to follow the Angels postseason push is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcasts, statcast news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Two outs, nobody on. Marwin Gonzalez at the plate. A change up there for Petit. The Angels in the bottom of the ninth have Maldonado, Phillips, and Trout do up. One to one. Verlander definitely with that look right there is is done. And even though Giles throws upwards close to 100, you're glad to see Verlander out of the game as well as he has thrown tonight. Because one hit allowed, that was a leadoff double by Brandon Phillips. Two balls, one strike. Trying to get that third final out. Giles ready to go in the bullpen for Houston. Two on. Three and one. One thing to keep in mind, if you keep this score just a one-run deficit, the Angels have been great as far as outscoring their opponents in the ninth inning. Scored him 69 to 40 this season. That's a 20 plus 29 differential. Best in the bigs in the ninth inning. Full count. Figured that uh, Ben Revere would lead things off. Pinch hitting for Maldonado. 
The only hit in the game for the Angels. The very first batter that came to the plate against Justin Verlander the first Brandon Phillips a double into the left field corner. His first extra base hit as a as a halo. Three two. Oh, he got the perfect pitch too. Got him to reach for it. Keeps his at bat alive. Down to reach for it again. Phillips has it. We'll head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Nine, one, and two coming up for the Angels. They're down to one nothing. Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is being brought to you by the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica, the new benchmark of minivans. Test drive one at your local Chrysler dealership today. By Mercury Insurance, we're on a mission to save you money. Log on to MercuryInsurance.com to get a fast free quote and see how much you can save. Houston on top one nothing in the opener of this three-game set. The Angels kick off a nine-game homestand with the Astros, Rangers, Indians during this stretch. Justin Verlander limited the Angels to three base runners. Double by Phillips and then uh, walking and hitting Trout. That's it for the Halos. So they'll try to figure out Ken Giles here in the ninth inning. 56th game. One and three record at a 2.63 ERA. And it'll be Ben Revere leading things off. He'll be pinch hitting for Martin Maldonado. Giles with 25 saves on the year. And 95 to 100 miles an hour on his fastball. Although a Occasional curve and sharp slider. He throws quite a few of them. And the one thing you want to do if you're Ben Rapier, get on base right away. You can steal a base against Ken Giles. 268 batting average. Six for 21 as a pinch hitter this season. Bregman playing in over third base. Reddick shallow toward the foul line and left. Two balls, no strikes. Mentioned that stolen bases allowed three stolen bases in three attempts this season. Over the last three seasons, ten stolen bases in ten attempts against them. Ben started the rally for the Angels in the eighth inning on Sunday with a leadoff single, pinch hitting for Martin Maldonado. 
on board any which way you can. That's out towards center field. Hit it too good though. Marisnik is there. One out. Hit well by Revere. Right on the nose. Right at. Marisnik at center. Going back to my Hyundai key for this game. Nothing but a good time. It's going to have to get started right here now. Brandon Phillips started off the game with a double, trying to get on base to bring Trout to the plate with a chance to walk off against the Astros. 0 for 2 in his career against Giles. 1 for 3 in this game. Little flare down the right field line, and that is going to fall in there. It's a fair ball. Phillips going to try to go to second. Springer with a good arm, and Phillips is in there. Unless he comes off the base, and he does. It looked like he was safe. And the second base umpire, Pat Hoberg, waiting to make a call. And it looked as if maybe Phillips came off the base, and maybe Phillips arguing that he was pushed off the base. And that's the right thing to do. You're trying to press the issue here and Springer with a good arm. See, he beats it out, foots on the base, stays on the base. Is he trying pushing to stay balanced? Oh, wait a second. And when is he? I, don't, I can't it, tell. I don't man. see what angle he's actually off the base. You might as well take a look at it. See, this angle's a little bit better, though. See there, foot is on the base, still connected, still connected, and then a separation. And he's off the bag there. He's out. So two outs, nobody on, and it's Trout at the plate. Good job by Carlos Gray to keep that tag on him, even though Brandon Phillips got to that base, kept the tag on him. We'll see that so often now with replay. Breaking ball misses to Trout. One ball, no strikes. Mike two for seven in his career with three walks against Giles. He's 0 for 1 tonight with a walk and a hit by pitch. Lined out to Marvin Gonzalez and left in his first at bat. What a what? Bouncer to third. Bregman comes in. And he gets shut out of the opener of this one against the Houston Astros by the final of 1 nothing. Boy, in the story of this game has been pitching, and Justin Verlander was excellent. Brandon Phillips had a solid game, tried to get into scoring position again, but off the bag, and the tag applied by Carlos Correa as Houston wins game one of this three game set 1 to nothing. Garrett Richards threw the ball very well himself. Tough one here tonight for the Astros taking it one hey. nothing. Back to wrap this one up after this.